Welcome back. I'm your host, Johnny Freeborn. You are watching Central Valley Talk Business. And my next guest has been here before on, over Skype. And uh, this is Chris. Help me with your last name, Chris. Boudreau. Boudreau. All right. I just asked you a second ago, too. M Delivers is your company. And uh, you guys cover a broad range, uh, broad territory, I should say, uh, throughout California, correct? Correct. Kind of the Central Valley, Northern Cal area? Well, we cover well, in-person uh, in delivery. delivery. We do all throughout San Diego County and then basically all throughout Central California up through Sacramento. But then we also offer mail order delivery statewide. That's right. That's right. It's coming back to me now. So, Chris, how's been? How has uh, business been? It's great. It's great. You know, it's great. We're very fortunate to be, uh, I think, positioned where we are at this point in the market. Um, you're seeing... Uh, obviously, tremendous growth in this industry right now um, and tremendous opportunity. I think a lot of people are coming to realize that it's not this heroin derivative or, or heroin comparable type drug. It's something that can actually um, be healthier. The science supports that it's something much healthier than a lot of the pharmaceuticals. And it can be a great way to help relieve stress or anxiety, help you sleep. Um, and of course, it's a lot of fun. As it ranked as a Schedule 1, is that correct? Right. So, so it's still they still link it up there with heroin, even though everyone yes. knows that's that's really rather silly. But um, well, and it's really it's interesting you bring that up. So the the expectation of the standard, uh, the requirement for a Schedule One drug is that it has to be highly addictive, and it has to have no medical value. And you have Sanjay Gupta, the head uh, CNN medical correspondent, who's done a number of articles and a number of videos on the the medical importance of cannabis in our society. You have the US uh, Federal Surgeon General last year who came out and said cannabis has clear medical value. Um, and then just actually about a week ago, you had, and forgive me, I can't remember the name of the department, but you have this federal branch that actually reviews and evaluates the impact of narcotics. And they actually came out and said, and it's kind of an unusual department. It's, it's, it's like some partner of the DEA. But they came out and said, okay, well, yeah, it's clear. Actually, cannabis does have medical value. So you've got, you've got all these departments that, are like, that have been reserved about wanting to say it, but they're actually being forced because there's just too much good information to support it. And I always like to liken it to um, just or break it down in kind of a simple measure. You say, okay, well, if it's, if it's really as addictive as heroin, um, and by the way, just to, to note how funny and ridiculous this is, cocaine is actually Schedule II. Um, so cocaine is actually considered much healthier than cannabis right now by the federal standard. Well, uh, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you say, okay, if, if it's really that bad, how do you have millions of people in Colorado, millions of people in Washington, and millions of people in Oregon where they enjoy it recreationally all the time, and we actually see violent crime rates have statistically gone down since they've legalized it recreationally. This is the case. Wow, that. I didn't know. Yeah, actually. And, you know, the more important thing is that if you look at, and these are true statistical facts, you can research this yourself. If you look, those states have put out information, the Department of Health of those states has put out information that actually shows since they've made it recreationally legal, uh, heroin addiction and opiate addiction uh, through the form of pain pills has actually decreased by about 25%. Wow. So... so um, in fact, I think Jeff Sessions or, or one of his people actually came out a couple weeks ago and said, okay, well, look, it's hard to deny we have these facts that show that the states that have gone recreational or have enacted medical marijuana have shown a significant decrease in opioid use. Um, and, and, you know, it's really, I think everybody's a little aware that it's somewhat of an epidemic in our country right now, the pharmaceutical um I think pharmaceuticals do a great job and offer a wonderful thing to our society, but there has to be some checks and balances because they can, they do have a propensity for addiction. Uh, and the nice thing is that cannabis doesn't. So technically cannabis is only as addictive uh, as video games and porn by a percentage. And it's not chemically addictive at all. It's just psychologically addictive. So I, I feel like if it's, if it's as addictive as video games, as much in the past as I enjoyed video games, you're probably pretty safe. Um, so this was the first April 20th since California legalized recreationally. Uh, did you guys see any difference in the holiday? Uh, that, that was 420 for those who don't know. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that is a, uh, a great question. We've got kind of a, an interesting thing. So we, we actually voted to pass recreational cannabis, but we don't have the regulatory infrastructure to allow recreational marketplace yet. So we won't actually see recreational stores where you can just go buy cannabis until next year. So we're, we're actually still a medical state, but I would say that we saw a nice increase this year. It was a good, it was a good day for us. Thank you. Okay. 
All right. So now you guys specialize in delivery and mail order, you said? Correct. Correct. Okay. Correct. So um, to see your menu, where would people want to go? To the website below? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mdelivers.com. Uh, yeah. If, and, you know, we're, I would say that we're unique and that we're a little bit larger organization. We're also one of maybe three in the entire state that are completely compliant. We're actually tied to a permit uh, in the city of San Diego that allows, uh, under the state laws, this allows us to deliver throughout the state uh, in a permitted and compliant way. So we try very hard to follow all the rules and all the laws. Um, um, so, uh, but we also have uh, really fantastic customer service and that's unusual. And so somebody can also, cause we have a lot of people coming into this who maybe got, you know, smoked a little when they were younger that are coming back into this and they're looking for a little guidance and a little handholding maybe like, mm, I don't really know what I'm looking for, which is, you know, a very common theme and that's fine. We have uh, wonderful customer service people. We have our own call center. All somebody has to do is dial 1-800-CANNABIS and they get our team. Uh, we, I don't think we can make it any easier. <laughs> I, I would say so, yeah. Um, so you guys are delivering here in the Fresno area. Um, yes. People still need their medical script, correct, in order to get that? Yes. Okay. Yes, for now. Those are scattered throughout the area. Um, and we can actually even, if somebody's not sure where to go, uh, they can just call us and we can help uh, guide them, offer some some numbers and some doctors for them. Very good. Uh, we even actually can help facilitate that through our website where we can help recommend some doctors that people can go to. So, you know, we, we really try to make the opportunity and the experience as easy as possible for people that need to get good medication. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions about marijuana. That is... Um, uh, one thing I've found is there's a huge difference between sativa and indica, and a lot of the viewers <laughs> probably have no idea what I'm talking about right now. Can you kind of inform them, give them a, a rundown? Absolutely, and that's a really great question. Um, so um, it's really almost like two different uh, – I think people would have a tendency to say, well, it's like the difference between uh, maybe vodka and tequila, and it's really more like the difference between um, – um, gosh, like a, a pain medicine and a sleep medicine. Uh, they, they have very different effects, um, and it just has to do with the different genetics of the plant strains. Um, so almost like lemons and limes, like kind of similar, but actually quite different. And so um, sativa will give uh, what we try to describe as kind of a um, more of a, a head high or more of kind of a functional high uh, so that... Um, you know, if you need to, to deal with some pain or you've got um, some some issues that you're trying to help resolve, you know, maybe emotionally, it's a great way to help treat that with um, something that you can stay functional. Uh, indicas are wonderful because some people have some really intense pain um, or have some other issues and they're looking for, you know, tremendous anxiety. They're looking for something to maybe help calm them down a little. Uh, I use it to help me sleep. Uh, that's actually one of the most common uses is sleep and anxiety or those two. Um, Indicas can help bring that down, uh, but a heavier dose of indica produces an effect that we call couch lock, which is really just kind of that. You just you just feel so comfortable and so warm, you just kind of melt into the couch, um, but you're not quite as functional often on indicas. And then you have uh, kind of a blend of the two genetics uh, and that's commonly referred to as like a hybrid, uh, hybrid strain. So, uh, but a great question. And, and, you know, what we do in delivery is we actually have almost like uh, in-home nurses. Okay. Uh, in this industry, they're called bud tenders, like a bartender only with bud. I see. Um, and so uh, our in-home staff would actually sit down and talk to a person about their medical condition and see what it is that they're treating for and how we can help them with that. And so, um, you know, in San Diego, just like in Fresno, where you've got Lemoore, in San Diego, we have a few military bases. Mm -hmm. And so we have a big military population, a lot of people coming back from the Middle East with PTSD and some other concerns, and they're looking for something maybe to help with that. And you wouldn't want that kind of person to have a sativa or somebody with high anxiety oh, I see. because the sativa keeps you a little more functional, um, where the indica can help them relax and deal with. It's actually, in some states, PTSD is actually one of the very few items that are uh, approved for medical marijuana because... Uh, because it's so good at helping deal with PTSD. Yeah. Uh, but but your question is very on and uh, uh, a great point, and that is that you need to make sure that you're, you know what you're getting, and, and we can actually help with that. That's amazing, yeah. the That's invaluable to have someone just give you the, the uh, coaching uh, when you're getting back into it or if you're just confused on what it is you're taking. There's a lot of advances in the technology of, of this industry, and so... Um, 
it's good to have people like yourself and companies like uh, like yours that keep people informed. So thank you, Chris, well, thank for you. the service you're providing and uh, the great business. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time and the opportunity. It's been wonderful getting to know you even more. So, all right, Chris, awesome. thank you so much. We will be right uh, take back. Take care.